uh, is not quite what the Green Party presents. Question number six, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister for Building and Construction. Does he accept the finding of the periodical The Economist that New Zealand has the most unaffordable housing in the developed world? Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, no, and that's not what The Economist said. Furthermore, furthermore the report is based on six months old data and Auckland house prices have dropped 8% since then. Right. Oh. Supplementary. Helps read the article, Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does he accept that, according to The Economist, New Zealand has had the highest rise in house prices, costs the most against the average person's income, and now has the biggest difference between house prices and rents? Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, I also note that New Zealand has had the strongest economic growth, some of the lowest levels of unemployment and some of the strongest population growth. I'd also note that the OECD report actually notes that house prices in countries such as Australia and major cities has actually grown faster than they have in New Zealand. <laughs> Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does he accept the glowing accolades of the property speculators who made an average profit of $70,000 per house flipping Auckland houses last year and who say that he is doing a great job on the housing portfolio? Mr Speaker. Order. Order. The Honourable Dr Nixon. Mr Speaker, every time I hear the member saying that a Labor government is going to top, stop speculators, I have to ask the question, why and how? Uh, because, how? Because anybody who pretends that they can prevent speculation are dreaming. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When the former Prime Minister John Key told him to supercharge the housing market when he appointed him to fix the housing crisis in January 2013, why did he take him literally? and drive up the median house price to median income ratio from 6.7 times to 10 times and run up a 40,000 dwelling deficit. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, when I became uh, building and construction minister, New Zealand was building 13,000 houses per year. New Zealand is now building 30,000 houses a year. I challenge the member to find any four-year period where house construction has grown so quickly. Supplementary. Oh, supplementary question, Joanne Hayes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister for Building and Construction, what recommendations has The Economist made about how to improve long-term housing affordability? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, The Economist has noted that the worst house prices exist in cities with the tightest land regulation and has strongly advocated policies that reduce the time and cost of consenting new housing developments. That is exactly what this government is doing with its resource management amendment bill that is being so strongly opposed by members opposite, showing that they are part of the problem, not part of the solution. Growth boundary. Absolutely. Supplementary. Supplementary, supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Is he surprised that Hugh Pavletich, the co-author of the Demographia report on housing affordability, uh, whose forward to that report was contributed by the, pr the current Prime Minister only a few years ago, describes him, that is the Minister, as a blundering incompetent? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. I'm used to all sorts of personal abuse. I just get on doing my job and focusing on the issues that matter. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Can he answer this question that was posed by the Dominion Post? And I quote, nearly everyone can see the problem from the teachers who can't afford a house in Auckland to the employers calling for a huge public house building program why can't the government see it? 
The Honourable Dr Nixman. This government has done more in the reform of the housing market than any government in living memory. And that is why I'm proud of our record, whether it's been the generous home start support, the housing infrastructure uh, uh, fund, whether it be the changes to the RMA, whether it be the changes in the Auckland unitary plan, it is those sorts of substantive reforms that will make the difference. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, noting that the only winners in his comprehensive housing plan are speculators and foreigners, why won't he admit that his, that his comprehensive housing plan is nothing short of a catastrophe? Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I look at the 20,000 New Zealanders who picked up a Home Start grant, the most generous support that government has provided. I look at the doubling in the amount of funds withdrawn from KiwiSaver for those uh, who are buying houses. I look at the 30,000 houses per year that are being built, more than double what I became as Minister, and I simply challenge the member, find me a period where house construction has grown so quickly. Order. Order. Mr Farfoy. Question number seven, Todd Muller. 